everyone. Welcome to the Band of Brothers podcast. I'm Elton. This is Andy. Hello. And we have got uh, Karen. I always, I always mispronounce this. Karen Tan. Karen, Karen Tan. Karen Tan. Karen Tan. There we go. Oh, it's French though, isn't it? So we just go on, down. Go on, down. Right, goodbye to our French listeners as well. Excellent. <laughs> yes, so we, we've got this to cover. This is uh, part three, if I'm rightly uh, thinking well, about it. Well, it's our it. fourth podcast, but it's, our, it's part three of Band of Brothers. Yes, yeah. That's the way we fly at the moment. Oh, like, yeah. hunky-dory and higgledy-piggledy all over the place, but who cares? We, we are not specialists in no the military. Uh, the enemy. Yeah, exactly, yeah. <laughs> We are not specialists, we have not served, but we are just fans of this show. I feel like I need to say that, just in case, just to cover our asses. sometimes. Um, you never know when the next sniper is out I was there. Say, I was going to say, yeah, you, want, you say you cover your ass, but you might get a purple heart. Oh, yeah. A bit like Popeye. <laughs> Did he get a purple exactly. heart? He must uh, have. He must, he must have. have. He was shot by the enemy. Yeah, he must have done. Yeah. Just didn't see it. Just didn't see it. Ah, oh, well, didn't see it coming. Yeah. <laughs> oh, well, right, okay. In Straight the... up Main Street. <laughs> <laughs> Initial impressions of Carenton. Or Carentan. I, I don't know how to pronounce it. I'm just going to go with my stupid English accented way. Carentan. Yes. Um, are, you, are you asking me? Yes, I am. Um, I remember this being my least favourite episode of Band of Brothers, and... I'd, I'd probably stand by it. There's, there's good bits in this, but uh, do you want me to get into why I don't particularly like this? Or do you yeah, want me to yeah, go for it. Yeah. Oh, okay. So, so my biggest problem with this basically is um, Albert Blythe, uh, because this is really the first time we've been introduced to him. Mm. Um, where, and the thing is, they went to all that trouble of introducing the characters and everything in um, Cure here at the beginning, and, and you know, so we got to know them. We got a bit of a sense about them. And then they just drop us in with uh, Albert Blythe in this episode, and we don't see him again after this episode. And it almost felt like he was just, you know, guest of the week. It's, yeah. it's like an episode of The Next Generation, and today we're following Ensign Timmy on his rounds around Deck 6. <laughs> okay. And, 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 and all your favourite cast are still there. There's Captain Picard, there's Riker. But they just kind of walk by and say hello, and they're off. And I'm like, no, I want to go and see what they're doing. I want to go and see the... No, I want to go that way. But no, we're we're following Albert Blythe. And it's an interesting story. The, the aspects about post-traumatic stress disorder and, you know, or shell shock and stuff like that. I think that's interesting and definitely worth looking into uh, and exploring. I just think that because it was with someone we just haven't had a chance to get to know, mm. the impact's gone. It's wasted in that respect. It's it, it, Imagine if they'd have just... Even if it's a couple of scenes, a couple of scenes in Cure where you see him in basic, we just touch base with him on day of days and, you know, we see him just drop and the bit when he talks about falling asleep. If we could have just seen these moments and then come to this, it would have had a much greater impact, I think, and would have been meaningful. But it just felt a bit disjointed because, you know, we start off on um, on the six on, on, on the drop itself when he's there staring at the parachute. Then we jump to six days past and count and all that. And then at the end, we do this weird 25 days later jump. And it just felt really bitty and disjointed. Yeah. So that's, yeah, I mean, I mean, it, it's just, it, the, whole, the whole episode just feels a bit uneven. Yeah, yeah. I get it. I get why you feel like that as well. Um, don't, I, don't get me wrong, but some great bits in there. But the Battle of Karatan is great. I mean, it reminded me so much of the end of Saving Private Ryan mm -hmm. and it's beautiful moments. And I, I mean, I'll tell you what, bits when, um, who's the guy who takes a um, medical shot to the face? Oh, I can't remember his name now. Um, oh, um, is it? Oh, hang on. Um, I, I've got his I, name written down somewhere. Tipper or something, isn't it? Yeah. I, I mean, I mean, that for me had more emotional impact just from when um, uh, the other guys come up to him and they're like, they walk around the corner and they're just shocked and they're like holding him and everything. And it's like that had so much more impact than everything that happened to Blythe because I knew these guys. Mm -hmm. I've spent time. I, 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 you know, I got in a sense of who they were um, and it just felt more real. Whereas everything with Blythe just felt a little bit dreamlike, you know? 
I mean, I mean, to be perfectly honest, until I knew this episode was coming up, I'd completely forgotten about him as a character. He, he just doesn't have any impact over the course of a series because he's in it so briefly. Maybe it would have paid to, as you say, drop him in on on the first or second episode. Just a, a glimpse, even just, just to see him I mean, land. A, a, yeah, just, just a couple of instances, I think, would have gone a long way uh, you know, to help us. I mean, you've got what's his name, uh, Luz, doing the impressions and all that, um, and we haven't seen, we didn't see him in Day of Days, but we saw him in Cure. Yeah. So that's fine. You know, all of a sudden, I remember you. You 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 did a fun thing with um, uh, in in the first episode. You did the voices. Okay, fine. I've seen you at play. I know everyone knows you. I know there's a connection there. That would have had more impact. But I mean, Blythe is just a, a bit bland and again nothing against um the guy playing him uh who was it it was mark warren mark warren does a great job mm. um it just it it, it feels almost like a they've squeezed the story arc down to just do one episode with him just so they can get it done get him out and be done with it yeah i, th- I feel he's a um uh, he he's a trailer for the story of the stress disorder. Yeah, a, a, exactly. And and again, I I totally think it's worthwhile having that story told and having that aspect to be explored. It's just because we haven't seen this guy, he just comes across as a coward, as, as someone with no guts or anything like that. Mm. His whole hysterical blindness thing. Because we haven't seen him bonding with people, we haven't gotten the impression that they like him or dislike him or what have you. We haven't seen how did, um, uh, what's his name, uh, Sobel. Did Sobel bully him uh, and all this? We, we haven't gotten any sense of how he interacts with the rest of Easy Company mm. until now. And it's it's it, it's weird. It's It's like all of a sudden you've turned up for Christmas dinner. And there's an uncle sitting at the table. Everyone seems to get on and say, yeah, they know his uncle, but you've never seen him in your life. <laughs> and you're like going, what the fuck's going on here? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It would have been, you know, if, if someone has seen him, seen Blythe in the first two episodes, then please let us know, point it out, or just give us a, a frame number or a, a account number where we can actually find him. But we've seen Fastbender in this more times than Blythe. Mm-hmm. So... I'm Hell, more... we saw Simon Pegg more times than we've seen Blythe. Yeah, this is true, yeah, yeah. And so it's a clunky gear change. Mm-hmm. It's it's one I feel we need because we need to know how the soldiers are feeling. Absolutely, but I, I just feel it could be better served by telling the story with some of the other members of Easy Company. Yeah. Um, I, I, I mean, obviously, it's kind of stymied by we're following the book, Band of Brothers, and um, Winters wrote about Blythe in this chapter or what have you. You know, he he, he mentioned it. But I, I just feel because they haven't taken the time earlier to introduce the character and let us meet him and get to know him, I have no emotional investment in him. Yeah. It, it's, it's like as soon as we see him, it's like, OK, you know, uh, what's your story? And it, by the end of it, you're like, OK, he's out and that's it. Yeah, it's, it, it matters not an iota. I've, I've got no real investment there. Yeah, if that had been carried over maybe two episodes, then we would have grown to become attached to him a little bit well, more. Well, yeah, even if they'd have just dropped the scenes from earlier on into Day of Days. So when they first meet up with him and, you know, just kind of even if he was just in there and it carried over into it, it probably had more of an impact hmm. than um, than what it has. Um but yeah, after, you know, I mean, again, it's always going to have a hard job following Day of Days because Day of Days is just such a fucking powerful um, episode. Yeah, it's um, just a kick in the groin, isn't it? It really yeah. is. Um, and then uh, even when you get over to the next episode, I mean, just it, 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 the next episode, again, it's got you, you're with familiar characters. And in the next episode, they deal with introducing new characters a lot better because they're characters that are going to be throughout the series to an extent. But this one, it's just, it's a weird little, it's just, I, I don't want to say a misstep because I think that's wrong. It's just a weird tonal shift compared to what we've seen on the other episodes. Yeah. Incidentally, you forgot to mention about the um, veterans at the beginning. 
just in case that was going to be a thing. No, no, we haven't got onto that yet. We're, we're just doing the okay. initial oh, we're just thoughts. Doing the okay. <laughs> I, just I like, like your ass covering, though. That's good. Yes. That's good. <laughs> Uh, my well, initial... part one with the other. <laughs> yeah, 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 why not? Um, my initial thoughts. Um, I am a little bit like you. It is a clunky gear change for me where we haven't been really introduced to this guy up until the point where we see him staring up at the sky. Mm-hmm. And it is it is like a Monster of the Week episode. What's where... even weirder as well is that he's part of Easy Company. If If he was one of the other companies who kind of got subpoenaed into Easy... Like we saw with um, the radio operator, yeah. Able Company, um, last time out. Far, I'd, have been, I'd have been more forgiving about that then because it'd be a case of, okay, he's a stranger. He doesn't know these people, but he's been forced to be here. But no, he's part of Easy Company. But this is the first time we're meeting him. <laughs> he's part of Easy, but isn't that he's, split? It's split into platoons. Uh, yeah, so you've got um, a company, and I think it's four platoons mm-hmm. um yes because winters is third platoon uh nixon was second platoon and um hester was first platoon right uh, at the beginning uh so okay it's three platoons so even so you, you because he's from easy company it, it feels even worse if if it was a case of okay fine disc is a guy from dog company or fox company or one of those, and he had to go in with easy, you know, because he's making up the numbers. Yeah, I'd have, I'd have been more okay with that because that, then, then you've got a sense that he's a stranger to these other people as well. Yeah, that might have but settled if, a bit better. Yeah, I, I think, yeah, that's just what makes it a bit uneasy there. Yeah, I, I, I think the issue is still well done because we do need to see the soldiers going through every type of emotion. We, oh, yes. need, we need to see, not cowardice. It, I don't perceive this as cowardice. This is more uh, trauma and mental and physical trauma from what they're oh, going absolutely. through. You know, it, it, three it's days ago. It's, yeah, it's PTSD. Yeah, three days ago, they're in England. Oh, yeah. And then. They were in England, you know, getting their laundry done and, you know, just chilling and uh, lying on the uh, ground next to Dakotas. Yeah. <laughs> so I totally get what he's going through or try to understand what he's going through. But like you say, it's just a bit, it's it's a bit too much of a left term just to take this character on straight away. Yeah. But you know, that that's what we've dealt with. And Mm -hmm. I don't think it really happens anymore. Does it? This is the only clunky. This, 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 this is like I said, this is, I mean, this is my least favorite episode. Yeah. But even so, it's still a damn good episode. Yeah. There's, there's great bits throughout here. Um, it's just the bits with focusing solely on Blythe are kind of like these weird like out-of-body experiences almost. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Like we're, we're watching third person over over the shoulder of all the company. Yeah, uh, a little bit. Um, but yeah, I mean, other than that, it's... Um, Again, the battle sequences are great. Um, we're getting some good development from um, Winters, mm-hmm. you know, m- moving into the role of the uh, the commander of EC Company. Yeah. Um, I liked, I like, I liked the battle because again, I I felt a lot more emotional impact when some of those guys are getting wounded, uh, like when the uh, platoon sergeant um, got shot and he's looking down at his bloody groin, yep. and he's just like, rips the trouser and goes, don't worry, everything's where it needs to be. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, I'll get you. Okay, right, well, should we get into the episode? I, I don't know if we're going to do it a, a different way this week. Uh, I'd like to go bit by bit, but maybe not as harsh, because there is so much going on in this episode. Oh, sure. So well, maybe, uh, maybe I'll, take, I'll take my lead from you, sir. <laughs> maybe take section by section and talk about the sections individually. Sure. So we open... With our our heroes, uh, the men that did actually go through this. Yes, the actual and, men of Easy Company. And fucking hell, if that's not Gonorrhea, the first guy that turns up. Oh, it it it, it is so Garnier. <laughs> it's is so Garnier. And, and the, the guy they got playing um, Garnier, um, Frank John Hughes. Yeah. Looks so much like Bill Garnier. It's uncanny. It's like, and and sounds like him as well. They got the voice down pat. Yeah. 
and it's just like yeah that is there's, there's no titles we don't know who this is but it's like as soon as you know it's gone here <laughs> yeah it's such an excellent job fucking hell man it's it's superb but that's that's what i love about it because we haven't had any titles once again we still haven't got any names to these fellows we have just got gentlemen talking to us about their experiences we know that they're the guys that have fallen or uh, parachuted in but we don't know who they are but as soon as you see him you're like he didn't even have to open his mouth you're like bang gotcha it's gone yeah <laughs> <laughs> Oh, it's superb. But they're talking about, um, uh, they're worried about uh, being killed instantly, or if they weren't going to get killed instantly, they'll make it all the way through the war without a, a total scratch. Everyone had fear, and they didn't want to let themselves down because you'd be letting, letting yourselves down and your company as well. I mean, they're talking about fear. They're yeah. talking about fear. And, and again, it's this when people look back at it they always say oh wow you know how could you have done this you know and all and, and, and all but you know thinking that they weren't terrified whereas the truth of the matter is they were all scared shitless yeah. if you weren't scared you weren't paying attention <laughs> no that's totally correct yeah it's uh there was another line um uh, you, you, ha- you have to handle your fear and accomplish what you're supposed to be doing and it's just yeah okay put everything else to the back of your mind and just get on. And that's what this story is all about today. That's what this episode is all about. Because we get that from Spears later on. Mm-hmm. Just stick it to the back of your mind. And as soon as you accept it, then you, you can act as a soldier. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay, so we open up um, 8th of June, 1944, Normandy in France. Yeah, um, so this is uh, the second day on the ground. The they parachuted day. in on the night. They, they parachuted in... in... Uh, morning of the 6th. Yep. Because um, 6th was D Day. 7th uh, was them um, uh, day of days, you know, uh, taking out the guns mm-hmm. and everything there. This is the next day. Okay, yeah. So the the beaches have been stormed by this point. They're on the beach um, trying to make roads inland. Yeah. Okay, we got Blythe looking up and he's almost bleary eyed. He's, I don't know, he. he not seem shell shocked, but almost doesn't want to. Be, he doesn't want to be there. He's just looking up as, as if to say, "I was up there a couple hours ago. I want to be up there again." Well, he's certainly st- staring up at the sky, kind of wistfully. Yeah. Um, which just seems out of place again. But this is our first introduction to the guy, so we don't know ins and outs. I mean, my first thought when I very first saw this was he was looking up at a body because I thought there was a body in the tree. You see a parachute there and there's a wreckage from a glider. Yep. Um, but there's not. He's just looking at the sky. Yeah, and we've still got gliders on fire as well mm-hmm. and all, all that sort of stuff. Um, we He meets up with uh, some guys. I can't remember who they were, though. They It's uh, Talbot, Powers, and uh, Sisk. Right, okay. Yeah, because we get get to see them later on as well. Yeah. Yeah. And then they take off and they go up and meet up with the rest of Easy Company. Mm-hmm. And they don't really get much time to, to settle down and get their bearings or anything like that. Straight away, they're they're off. Um, yeah. We have oh, – we, we meet a couple of the guys from Easy Company as well, the guys with, with the watches. Uh, I can't remember his name now. Is it uh, Percont? Yes, yeah, Perko, yeah, he's, 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 he's like pulls up his sleeve and he's got like, you know, a dozen watchers, all still ticking. Yeah. Unlike the owners. <laughs> <laughs> Frank Percott. And we have uh, Dukeman as well. Yep. There as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, Blythe. They're, they're, well, this, they're still asking about um, uh, Mean because that still hasn't been resolved. They're, they're... Yeah, I mean, they're, they're saying um, Company HQ. So, so all of. So when they say Company HQ, they're talking about um, the lieutenant, um, the. Uh, company sergeants, you know, um, the people that basically run the company itself, the core of it, if you will. Yeah. Um, and yeah, uh, ha- putting them all on one plane, apparently. Mm. Wasn't a good idea, was it? No, no, not really, no. <laughs> I don't think they do that anymore, do they? Royal family doesn't fly on the same plane or the same no. helicopter. It just <laughs> to, doesn't to per- happen. Uh, well, to be perfectly honest, I don't think that would have a huge impact on um, any wars um, if they were taken out, but um, <laughs> hey <hey-oh. laughs> How dare you? All our spirit would be drained and all our tea would dry up. How it's true, it's you? true. <laughs> um, okay, so we, 
we've met some more of Easy Company. Uh, mm-hmm. Libgot, he's got a Nazi flag already. Yeah, yeah, he's got a flag. And there's still talk about getting a Luger. Ah, oh, it's fucking Luger. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh. Yeah, that's not going to go away, is it? That's really it, well. It, it will. It will go away, but not for an episode or two. Oh, <laughs> uh, I can't blame them. You know, they must have been going for. What was the other souvenir that the other chap had? He had a um, ah, uh, oh, it was a camo type thing. I, um, I, I think it was just one of their raincoats or something like that. Oh, um, okay. But yeah, I, I know. I think later on, some guy's got an SS knife with a swastika in it, and yeah, I mean, again, you know, it's just um, it's is that all about the souvenirs. Poncho? Is that the poncho? It's... Because of, of later on, what happens? Oh, it might well be that. That I think it might be. Might that might well be why it happens later on? Yes. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Right. Well, let let's bear that in mind. It could possibly be that. Oh, that, dearie that, that, me. I was going to say, uh, I, I, I feel less bad for the guy stabbing him at that point, man. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm afraid you deserve that if, you, if you're wearing, yeah. yeah. Didn't have a Jerry hat on, but uh, let's get to that in a minute. Um, Welch, is it Welsh? Sorry, Welch. I can't pronounce his name. I can't pronounce anyone's name. If <laughs> if you listen to the Grand Prix podcast, you'll understand I don't know anyone's name. It's, I'm I'm terrible. He's, I think it's well, yeah. He's taken control, um, and Easy Company are leading out. Yeah, he's first platoon's um, commander. Yeah, and Fox Company are following them as well, heading out. Yeah. Uh, they're going to Caratan. They've been told to take it. It's a, a it's a position because the people on the beaches, once they once they've got clear of the beaches, they need to get into this position. It's their only way through before they well, can it's, move it's on. So. Um... Omaha and Utah beaches can link up. Yeah. So it's it's a pinpoint. Uh, the Germans still want it, and the Americans want it as well, so we can continue on the war. And it's a very mm-hmm. important part of that strategic plan. So yeah. So they need to go along and take it, and we get uh, Luz making funny little comments as well. Oh yes. <laughs> Which is which is awesome. He, it's quite, and it's in keeping with what we know about him again. From because we didn't, he, he wasn't in Day of Days, so this is the first time we've seen him since Kirahi. Yeah, and like you say, as soon as you see him, as soon as you hear his voice, and he's he's taking the Mickey out of people. Yeah, okay, you know exactly where you are. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So we get some beautiful, uh, I don't know, picturesque type shots on here. Oh yeah, I mean it's in the photography when they're going up. Uh, it's alongside the river with the fire. Uh, the fires everywhere, past the dead Germans and everything. Oh. Um, you got Per Kont, uh, stealing another watch. <laughs> yeah, that's grim, man. That is grim. But yeah, yeah, I think in the book it was someone else that took the watch. I'm sure it was. I I can't remember who it was, but I'm, in the book, I'm pretty sure someone trod on a German officer, and it sighed. Uh. Um, yeah, I'm pretty sure that happens, but it was someone else that took a watch. But yeah, in this, he just nabs it and you can see him just checking it. Uh, during their walking over to Caratan, they lose F Company. Oh, yeah, as you do. <laughs> oh, who who doesn't lose F Company? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Cry out loud. I, I imagine if I had an F Company, I'd lose it at some point as well. Uh, there's, there's that nice comment with... Um... Uh, Winters and Nixon saying uh, officers crapping out on their training. <laughs> yeah, okay. What does that relate to? Is that just officers not? Is that not pulling their weight or just not? I, I, th- I think it's going back to. I, I think it's going back to officers like Sobel. Um, you know, too focused on appearances, too focused on not fighting the war, just following the rules, if you will. Okay. You know, they just don't know. I, that, that's how I read it, anyway. Right. Okay. So uh, Welch, uh, Welsh, he sends uh, Hobbler and Blythe to find F Company. That's when Winters uh-huh. and Nixon turns up as well. Yeah. So we get they they find F Company, or they find they find one of the chaps from F Company, a yokel. Um, yeah. Um, yeah. He, um, he's got those kind of like dead stare. You know, he, he's the kind of guy who's going to murder you in a swamp. 
and he'll smile about it and he'll oh, do yeah, it he, silently. He, yeah, while the dueling banjos go off, you know, it's um, yeah, he, he's not the kind of guy you want to come stepping out of a bloody um, trees like that. No, he's like <laughs> a fucking crocodile in water. Yeah. <laughs> Creep, creepy motherfucker. Yeah, um. yeah. Who you calling a yokel? <laughs> yeah. I'm allowed to do that. I'm English. That's that's my God-given right to take the piss. <laughs> so they, they find uh, F Company, um, and then Blythe is sent back to grab Easy to bring it back up and join the companies back together. Mm-hmm. And on his way, he finds a dead German. Now, this yep. is where kind of the story... Is all coming together at this point. It, you know, having now built up, all, all join it, the separate paths together, and it's a it's a dead German. We have Winters enter as well, and it's Nixon. a German power trooper. Hmm. Yeah, I can't remember what he uh, the the German word for it is, but it is explained that it is a German power trooper, mm-hmm. and he had a flower on him. Um, Edelweiss. Edelweiss. Yes, and it's Nixon that explains where this comes from. Yeah, only above the tree line in the Alps. Now, do we know that for certain? Uh, I believe so. I mean, there's a whole song in bloody uh, The Sound of Music about them. Oh, is there? Okay. Oh, yeah. I need to watch Which that. is also the intro for, um, if you watch The Man in a High Castle, uh, yep. it's the song at the beginning of that. So, oh, is yeah. it? Oh, okay. Yep. I watched four episodes and got a bit... No, I was spoiled on it. So I... I oh, don't, don't, don't let that stop you. Uh, don't uh, it, it, it's, it's well worth checking out, mate. <laughs> okay, maybe I might try that again. Yeah, four yeah. episodes in, and some bastard spoiled it for me because he wasn't happy with it, and so he decided to spoil everyone else. Tosser. Oh, I yeah. Say. I won't name any names, but, you know, Tosser. No, no, name and shame. No, name, no, name no, and shame, no, no, I'm, no. No, I'm not, no, I'm not doing that. I'm not doing that. Oh, you, 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 you could tell me off there, then. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll do. Um, yeah, so we get the story about the flower. So that's all set in our mind as well. Uh, we skip yeah. along to D-Day plus six. This is uh, on the outskirts of Carantan. Yeah. This is a motherfucker, this town. It is. It is. It's it's one of two towns which kind of um, give Easy Company a lot of trouble uh, over the course of a series. What's the other one? Do, I can't do you remember what it's called. It, it, it's the one when it's the snow. Oh, okay, yeah. yeah. You, you know what I mean. Uh, yeah, I, I know where we are in that story, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because... Oh, the... it's Bastogne, that was it. Oh, okay. Bastogne was the... Yeah, that was in Belgium, but yeah. Anyway, we digress. <laughs> yeah, this is... It's a horrible entry into that uh, town, where where you go over the rise. And you, oh, yeah. You can see all the houses. You know you're going to get pinched. You, you, well, you well, have uh, to know. It, it, it It's, again, uh, I, I think... They were a bit blasé about it. They, they, you know, obviously they, they feel like we've landed, we've made our beachhead there sort of thing, you know. And, uh, yeah, it's, everything's all good. I and mean, then all of a sudden, a couple of M42s open up and that's going to ruin your day real quick. Yeah. It's just the way that, okay, you, you're going up the road. Oh, it's That's the obvious way into that town. So they would have that covered, surely. And they did. Mm-hmm. Would there be no other entries around? You know, I think it's... Oh, I can't remember. Uh, Lipton takes a different way in. I know that for sure. Mm-hmm. Powers, he takes a different way in and ends up near yeah. a chicken coop. <laughs> yeah. So I know you're heading downhill as well. That That's the problem with this is you you have to go over that hill to get in. But as soon as you... Winter shows it because he's popping his head over that, that rise. And... That's all you can see. If you're looking down that road and you've got your gun trained down that road, you can see his head just popping up and down every now and again. It's just a it's just a massacre waiting to happen. Yeah, I mean, I, I guess they were lulled into something of a false sense of security since they didn't open fire until they were coming down the rise. Yeah. If anything, they probably opened fire a bit too soon. Um, but still, yeah, they, they opened up fire and... Um, uh, easy company will file into the uh, trenches either side of the road. Yeah. Um, um, and yeah, it, it's um, winters and uh, everyone trying to get the men out of the trenches because there's no cover there. Um, so they were um, getting to the town and uh, we get the Battle of um, Caratan. Yeah, which is, 
it's gloriously portrayed. It, it could have easily been the battle from the end of Saving Private Ryan. Like you, you could picture that's almost the same place. <laughs> yeah, right. What we got to remember: this is a TV show. This would sit well in any war movie whatsoever. Oh God, yeah, absolutely. You know the the way that it's shot, the the explosions that we have there, the the mess that it's made as well. Um, oh, the cinematography was just great. It was just, um, and again, it, it's it's just the way how when people get shot, they don't go flying backwards. Mm. They don't scream and go oh and fall back. They they just kind of collapse in a heap. Yeah. It's like there's a switch, and you see what, and the switch gets flicked, and they just go down like a sack of potatoes. Yeah, yeah, so gloriously done. In yeah, I think you know what I mean by gloriously done. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I I don't think he's celebrating the death of anyone here. He's no, just saying no, it's. No, no. it's from a cinematic cinematographic standpoint it's it's very well achieved yeah anyone um, listening Dolphin. that if if you think that we're just like, oh yeah that's bloody well good aren't you i'm, I'm sure that we're, we're happy that germans and americans and british people and french and all the others are, are dying like this no no we don't mean it like that it's it's we're appreciating what is on the screen portrayed to us just i just want to cover bases just <laughs> just in case just in case people think i'm a, a sicko and enjoy people actually dying that's not the way it is um but what what you get here winters forcing the men up and shouting this is what happened winters did stand up there and how he didn't take a bullet standing on that ridge forcing his men out of the the um the ditches either side yeah. of the road i do not know and he says he does not know as well he doesn't know how he took a bullet yeah but he did it and he stood there and he had that gun blazing all around him and he got his men going and that just shows you what a, a supreme leader he is absolutely yeah but yeah he gets his men um into the town i mean quite a few get taken out just charge again as you do, there's two machine guns opening fire, plus a sniper. Um, you got um, Shifty Powers spots the sniper and manages to kill him. Yeah. Um, I love his thumbs great... up. His thumbs up is fucking awesome, man. <laughs> oh, yeah. You, you, you got the bit where he's, he's by the um, chicken coop and that gets shot up and you just hear him go, oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> well, he runs uh, in and then the guy immediately gets taken out straight after him. Yeah. And that must have been by the sniper anyway. Yeah, well, you know, obviously it must have picked up powers running there and saw the second one and got him. Yeah. Um, you've got, uh, is it Tipper and Lugot? Are the ones, no, they're the ones with a bazooka. Uh, and they open up. Uh, who, who is it? it it's um, Walsh who'd... and, uh, sorry, Welsh and, uh, is it, no, it's not Lipton. Oh, uh, it Luz. Is it Luz? Yeah, I think. It, it might be Luz. They get pinned down behind a, a brick wall. Yeah. Uh, they get pit, they get pinned behind a wall when they open fire, basically. But then, um, uh, you know, there's some covering fire, and he just runs in with his grenade, mm. and it's just a, a glorious. You know, he's running up there. You know, he's holding the grenade. He lets it go, goes pink, and he just lobs it in the window as he drops to the floor, and then it goes, goes boom. Dude, um, that is superb the way they do that. It is, it is superb, and there's a beautiful shot a couple of minutes afterwards as well, where. Um, after uh, Tipper and Light got uh, taken out of a bazooka, this German comes out stunned. Mm-hmm. And Light just pulls out his pistol and shoots him. And, and it's like a painting, just yeah. the way that shot is framed. It's just such an amazing shot. Not the bullet shot, the cinemagraphic shot, just so we're clear on this. Yeah. Um, well, it's, it's, yeah. A, it's a famous Band of Brothers picture. Yeah, yeah, it, it is. But it's... Um, I mean, that whole sequence is just amazing. Uh, and you've got, again, Lipton running up uh, to the railing, throwing a grenade into the apartment. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, they're, they're just taking out the machine guns in this nest and all that, uh, bit by bit. Uh, and then uh, uh, the mortar fire starts coming in on them. And all of a sudden, it's just like, um, get out of the street, get out. Um, and this is when we pick up Blythe again, who starts running, but then he stops. Yeah. And just kind of slumps down the alley with... Um, you know, kind of a blank expression on his face. Yeah, I, I remember watching this first time round. I thought, okay, he's bottling it. He's bottling it. What the hell's going on? But he, he, he's not. That's the thing. He's not. That's what... If you're a stupid idiot like I was when I was first watching it, and you don't understand that, that's 
that's just ignorance from my point of view that I just didn't understand what was really going on in his head. Mm-hmm. And what did they call it? They called it um, oh, blind. I can't remember what blindness it was. It was oh, hysterical blindness. Hysterical blindness. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And he, he, I suppose his body's just freezing at that point. His body's shutting down. He, he, it's it is a, a type of shell shock that his body just doesn't want to react to anything else and just curl up in a ball. It's the fight or flight syndrome where are you also there's a third tier where you just curl up in a ball. Oh, it's, it's, it's again, I mean, shell shock itself is really just a severe form of PTSD. It's just, I didn't know what else to call it, mm. but yeah, I mean, it's just so much, it, it just overloads your brain and your brain just says, Nope. Yeah. Just Nope. Um, and yeah, I mean, again, I, don't blame him at all i mean we see like as soon as he goes down uh i can't remember who it is i don't think it's anyone we've met yet is standing there and um he, he gets his leg blown off you know it's like the shell just comes down and it was a lot more gratuitous than i remembered it being but you see his leg go flying off in a different direction and he just lies there and then um is it buck yes yeah, buck yeah it's buck and i think it's the first time we've seen no we saw him in um Kurahi, but we didn't see him in day of days, but yeah, uh, Buck Compton, um, just picks him up sort of thing and, um, uh, drags him inside. Yeah. It, it's just a case of, okay, fine. Put the gun down, pick the man up and walk off with him. Yeah. It, yeah. It is, it is startlingly done. Yeah. It's, it's, yeah, it's a, a shock to the system just to see that sort of stuff. You know, it, that's not even a direct hit. That is just, that's a, a ricochet off a mortar or artillery. I think that was artillery, wasn't it? It was artillery, yeah. Um, and it just came down, just blew his leg crane off sort of thing. And um, yeah, it just, just sent him flying. Yeah. We also have... Um, uh, oh, it wasn't it wasn't Buck, by the way, it got him. It was Bull. Bull Randall. Sorry, Bull. Yeah, Buck's yeah. the blonde guy, isn't he? Exactly, yeah. yeah sorry. Buck, yeah. Bull, same difference. Well, <laughs> you know who we meant. <laughs> yeah, Bull is the guy who plays... Uh, Oh, why why can I not remember anyone's name? Uh, he's a guy in Walking Dead, and I can see him. I, I uh, fuck you know. Oh, I'm I'm not going to go there. <laughs> oh dear. Um, we have Hobbler and Luz. They they clearing out the rooms as, as they go. Hobbler and Luz. They they Luz doesn't want to throw a grenade in because we've seen this in, in one building where they throw the grenade in and then they go in shooting after and make sure the Germans are dead. Yeah. This time round, he's, uh, Hobbler is telling him, throw the grenade in, throw the grenade in. He doesn't, he freezes. He, he, he thinks twice about it, shall we say, not freezes. Mm. And they just burst in through the door and there's a French family there. Yeah. And you can a, a little family see, and, um, see on their they, faces. They, it, it clicks that if they'd have done that, They've killed that family, yeah. Oh, man. Uh, yeah, you just got to think how many times that happened and how many times it didn't happen. So, yeah. Wow. Um, you also got Lipton still trying to clear the streets, um, takes a another shell nearby and goes flying. That's when he gets his um, bloody thigh. Um, yeah. This this was portrayed as it was in the book. Uh, uh-huh. he, he took this round and in the book it says that it threw him against a building uh, and he was still holding his gun when he landed. And they show this in, in this uh, shot here. This, this is how he has portrayed it. And yeah, but he, he takes a hefty hit and you can just see him look down his bloody trousers. You're like, oh shit. Oh no. <laughs> Little Lipton. Oh dear. Little Lipton's disappeared. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, of, 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 of all the wounds, that's the one you don't want to see. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, but he's all right. Mm-hmm. He's all right. So, they... as, as well as you can be for someone who's just had a shell explode in front of him. <laughs> yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. Uh, we, we've already spoken about Blythe um, the, and the uh, guys you've got, that uh, taken you've out. Got, uh, uh, it's Tipper who goes into the um, medical store, um, you know, again, clearing room still. Uh, with a uh, live got, yeah. and uh, leave got. Uh, he he's the one that goes into the back, and you know he shouts over to the shed. Is anyone there? Anyone there? And he just kind of open. You know he fires into it a couple of times. Because um, I always thought he was going to get killed because he didn't check it properly, and someone was going to open the door and shoot him or something like that. Uh-huh. 
but no he turns around he takes like three steps and the building just explodes is this artillery or is this something else uh i think it's artillery yeah um sorry it wasn't like it was tipper but yeah it's um i think it's a, an artillery shell to stop the building right because the windows um, blew out they blew out but i think that was just uh an effect of a special effect right okay um is, is they wouldn't have rigged the building with any explosives or anything like that there was, there was no time and no point mm. um but yeah um the thing all explodes basically and um you got this really it, it, it's almost like a classic horror shot where tipper's coming out going hello is anyone there um still holding his rifle um and that's when uh Lee got all that come around and they see his face and they're just like, oh, God, you know, yeah. um, and he runs over and, you know, helps him down and, you know, holds on to him and says, you're going to be OK, buddy, you're going to be OK. And uh, um, says, you want to go get a give me a hand here. And then you just see his face is just completely mangled down one side. Mm. Uh, both his eyes, I think, are gone. And his leg is just how he was standing. I've got no idea because it's just a mess of meat. Yeah. Uh, he's got a hole in his shoe, still smoking. It's just, yeah, it's grim. Do you know what I appreciate about this this scene here? What's um, that? It's the sound. Oh, we, it's all muffled, get. yeah. But it, it goes... Normally you, you get this... When they do this type of shell shock type thing where you, you, you've been concussed and... Or, you can only hear narrow, narrowly, I, I, I would imagine it. Um, they normally go for like a, a little whiny noise in the background, like white noise in the background, yeah. a squealing tinnitus type thing. Mm -hmm. And then everything fades in. This time, it, everything's really bassy. It goes really bassy, and then it all goes, it transfers all the way over to treble. Then everything else bleeds back in. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's, almost painting a picture for you just in sound but oh yeah I, i've sound never heard it fantastic yeah, i've never heard it done like that before the way it goes from bass to treble and then everything bleeds back in it just works so well and i, I feel that that is more it it works better for me yeah than for any any other movie that's done that sort of it's it's a neat little trick and it works it, it, it's a big thing in computer games, you know, like Call of Duty and stuff like that. Yeah. You know, when you, there's an explosion goes nearby. Um, but yeah, it's 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 done so well here. Yeah, but I, I feel they did it right this time around. Uh, once all this is going on, we also have a father, a father Maloney. His name uh -huh. is. Yeah. And he's he's reading last rites to soldiers that have fallen. Yeah. What? <sighs> While under fire as well. I mean, there's still shells coming down and. Fires going backwards and forwards, but yeah, yeah. he's uh, still doing his thing. Would the clergy have, you know, the uh, f the first aiders? They have their white armband with the red cross on on the uh, uh -huh. on the side. Would the clergy have anything like that at all? Uh, he does. He does. He, he he. I think it's a medic um, band on his arm. But, oh, um, okay. He, he's he's got something on his left arm. Um, I thought it was a red cross, but don't quote me on that. Right. And are there rules of war? Where that is, uh, uh, they're supposed to be to... afforded. They're, they're supposed to be afforded the same, um, the same as medics. You're not supposed to target them, I don't believe. Right. Uh, but it's always. I, I, I don't think it's so much a rule of war mm -hmm. as a unwritten rule. Again, someone knows better than us can correct us. But yeah. I mean, I, I, I was just reading. Uh, a book about the Battle of Britain and how the REF would shoot down German um, rescue planes with red crosses on them um, in the war because um, the British didn't bother putting red crosses on them because they were like, if you're picking up pilots to take them back to the front, you're a legitimate target. Yeah. Um, so I don't I don't know what the ins and outs of that are. I think with vehicles, it may be different. Because weren't there um, British ships with the Red Cross? Hospital ships were exempt. Hospital ships were not supposed to be targeted. But but they were, though. They weren't supposed to be, but they yeah. were. But, yeah, it was um, 
I, 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 all, all I'm saying is I don't, I don't know. Yeah. You'd like to think so, though. You would, you would like to think so. Um, but then again, you, you're there in the middle of a field. You know, you, you've got smoke, you've got debris everywhere, especially for lightning support. You're not going to necessarily know one way or the other. So no. No. You, you, you've got to say that the, um, the priest and the medics there are, are under huge risk to themselves. Um, and usually unarmed, usually aren't carrying weapons. So. Yeah, well, that just impedes their, their mobility, doesn't it? So Absolutely, yeah. Okay, fine. Um, Germans start retreating then. Yeah, they start, run away! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and then they're gunned down. Fucking hell. <laughs> they're gunned down exactly the same as uh, Winters and all, all, all that lot were as they were coming in. But they, they're going over the flooded fields. Or... Yeah, uh, yeah, they're going over the fields. They've got some machine guns opening up on them and all that. But uh, again, as they said last time out, in um, when they were taking the guns, you know, it's it, it, if you let them get away, they're just going to come back at you. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Saving Private Ryan proved that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So uh, no steamboat willies here. No. <laughs> um, okay, so it's the town is taken. Let's say. Uh, like, almost taken they need to wean out a couple more germans that are knocking around they need to clear yeah there's a couple the we, we 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 get um the lone ranger turns up on yep. silver uh <laughs> with a message so um, who... I, I, I i like to think he, he's rode that horse all the way here from the uk <laughs> you know or one of those landing transport ships you know he's just yeah <laughs> and why he's on the landing transport the horse is still galloping Almost. No, no, it's just standing. It's, it's just standing there minding its own business, you know. Uh, I mean, it storms up the beach, you know. <laughs> he needed a sword, though. I feel like he need, he can't be on a horse without a sword. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> or maybe a joust. But yeah. Yes, but yeah, um, uh, it's a messenger just asking. Um, he's reporting that the uh, uh, the Germans are in retreat to the north of them, and Winters reports that they've cleared everything to the south of them. Uh, and he goes off. And then you've got um, Battalion HQ. So it's Colonel Strayer and uh, Lieutenant Nixon and all that standing in cover while Winters is out in the open saying, is it safe? Is it safe? And he's like, <laughs> um, yeah, it's safe. <laughs> I love that. But it, it's a case of uh, 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 Winters, is it safe? And he looks at him and goes, pardon, what? <laughs> is it safe to cross? We've got men, you know, we, we need to take these to injured across like yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> but clearly it wasn't though so it, it is a good call yeah well absolutely because then a, a sniper fires misses winters but the ricochet catches him in the leg yeah um and he goes hopping off and thus ends the uh, opening battle of Kamatar. so that is done that is done okay so winters is taken back uh to be seen about his injury. They pull out the, yeah. the ricochet bullet. It's We've got Doc Rowe again. The yep. old Doc Rowe. Yep. And we, we'll see him bopping around in a few more episodes as well. So that, that, oh, that's he, nice. he, gets, he gets a whole episode to himself, he does. Yeah, that's one of my favourites, I feel. Oh, definitely. Yeah, me too. Yeah. Uh, and, I, and, I, and again, I don't want to get ahead of myself here, but I said one of the reasons why it's one of my favourites is because he's such an important character we don't he, he isn't really to focus in anything up until that point mm -hmm. but he's there yeah throughout it which is what's wrong with this episode with Blythe yeah yeah it's I think we can forgive them because it's the third episode we've had the train can we no no well, we, we've we, already well, dealt with is, <laughs> we, yeah again we don't want to go back over but again there is, there is no reason why he couldn't have been in the earlier episodes but yeah we we said our piece about that anyway. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Right. So we bump into Blythe again. Uh, mm -hmm. Winters has a chat with him, and he has hysterical blindness uh, as he's speaking to him. He he can't see anything. He said, "No, I just can't see anything." And then Winters touches him on the shoulder, almost like a guardian angel. I was going to say it's like he's Jesus because I'm healed. Yeah. JC. Whoa. Thank you very much. <laughs> and he he stands up and he he does look a bit bemused, shall we say? Yep. Leaves his M1 on the side. Says, I don't know what happened, but I think I'm okay. And he's out. <laughs> uh, yeah, well, Winters tells him to stay around for a bit. I don't know if he did or not, but... Yeah, I, mean, mm. I think also in the book, this is... Um, 
Blythe does meet Winters uh, back at uh, the the hospital uh, part, but that's all that's really mentioned about Blythe, from mm. what I remember. It's been ages since I've read it, but yeah, you know, from from what I remember anyway. Um, what else? They, uh, they we have a little talk about uh, the mis- mystery of spears. Shall we get into? Oh uh, yes. Once. Oh yes. First Lieutenant Spears. Uh, his his reputation seems to be growing. Th- this is the mystery that we were talking about in the second episode. Oh yeah. This is it building up. This is the, um, for want of a better, nineteen uh, eighties reference, Chinese whispers. That oh are happening. yeah. Scuttlebutt. Yeah, yeah. There was a dinosaur behind him, and there was there was a spacecraft as well. He and... came. He, he rode it. He rode up the beach on the back of a Velociraptor. <laughs> guns blazing, chest out. Guns, guns. Flame flows, my friend. Flame throwers. Flame throwers. <laughs> yes, yes. yes. Uh, I still maintain he would make an amazing judge. Yes, he would. <laughs> <laughs> He's fucking awesome. Judge Spears, man. It's got. It's got to be done. <laughs> Well, the way that they they tell these stories as well, because now these whispers have have built up to, well, I heard it was 20 men and they were digging trenches and then he handed all the cigarettes around and then he just got Thompson and blazed them all. And then there's a mystery of one person left as well. Oh, yeah. With with a cigarette burning his fingers. And uh, and I heard it wasn't him. It was someone else. And uh, yeah, it's it's. It's just, it's a nice little touch um, that, you know, again, is referenced again later on as well. Do you know what I love? That we don't know about this either. Oh, yeah, we don't know. And it's never, we, we, we never get a direct answer, which is great. Yeah. But then again, as someone points out, they go, all I heard is he took an, um, took one of the guns almost single-handed. And then um, I think it's Malarkey's like, uh, well, yeah, I did see that. That's you know? right, yeah, yeah, because yeah. they were just storming in and out of the trenches. He wasn't even in the trench, was he? Yeah, he just like, yeah, fuck this motherfuckers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they could turn around and say, yeah, he was on a Velociraptor. Yeah, it, it just, it, okay, fine, I believe you. Yeah, no problem. It, it, yeah, it, it, it was Pencala, and he says Spears took one hundred five by himself. He ran through MG fire like a maniac. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man, I, yeah. I, yeah. This, this is one of the things I really do love about Band of Brothers. It, it, just the mystery behind this guy. And oh yeah, we, we've got so much to talk about that later on as well. There, there's we a, a certain scene where I just flipping love it. I adore it, and I could watch it again and again. But I'll, I'll get to that. We'll, <laughs> later we'll, say, we'll save it for when we get there. Yeah. But yeah, while, while we're doing all this, they're asking Blythe. So what does he think about it? And Blythe's just like, well, I don't know. You know, he's he, he's a bit out of it. You know, it's he, he, he if 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 this was a Vietnam film, I'd, I'd think Blythe was just stoned all the time. Yeah, yeah, it it fits straight into that, wouldn't he? Yeah, I think he's trying to come to terms to where he is as well. Yeah, I think so. I mean, I I think he's trying to understand what it is to be a soldier. You know, it, it's probably a situation where he's terrified. They're all terrified. But the others are just better at concealing it or dealing with it or something. I don't know. Maybe it's a case of some of them are terrified. But like uh, uh, Garnier, he's he, he needed to get that first kill out of his system to get into the game. And that that's it. Okay, fine. We're in now. Mm-hmm. And he accepts where he is. And Blythe hasn't really gone through that yet. He's yeah, just not yet. Following along yet uh, at the moment. So, anyway, so um, they're moved out again. Uh, and oh yeah, uh, they're heading to. Um, uh, they, they want to hold the town uh, because it's important to the Germans as it is to the Americans. Uh, but rather than try and hold it in the town, they're going to go to high ground because they've seen Revenge of the Sith and they know that if you have the high ground. It's over, Anakin. <laughs> don't, don't, it, it, no, no, that doesn't wash with me here. You are my brother. Fuck off. Sorry. Honestly, no, that doesn't <laughs> wash here. 
God, I hate them films now. I really do. <laughs> okay, tangent. They had um, uh, uh, the clone film on on TV the other day. Oh, you poor man. <laughs> and, well, that that's my least favourite of all of them. I hate that film. But I thought, do you know what? I'll give it five minutes. And if, if I like it, I'll try and watch it to the end. I, I didn't even give it five minutes. I just ended up, no, no, life is too short. Life is uh, well, far too short now. If, if I can just do a small plug before the end, uh, Space Doc Jury this week, uh, or it been last week when this came out, uh, we all rate all of the Star Wars films. Um, I think you'll be pleasantly unsurprised as to where that one came. Good, good. <laughs> Hopefully below Caravan of Courage. <laughs> Or the Battle of Endor. Please tell oh, me you put them yeah. in there as well. Uh, we'll have to listen to find out. Okay. Oh, nice, <laughs> nice. I like your like your professionalism. That's good. Thank you, sir. That's Thank good. you. I learned from the best. <laughs> <laughs> well, it worked for me. It worked for me. Um, okay, so we're we're heading up uh, to take this uh, to it, high ground. Yeah, to the high ground. Yeah. Yeah, and we got Picante um, wondering why is it always us um, in the middle. You know, uh, uh, we're, we're never at um, no. we're never at the front. We're never at the back. No, um, they're always at the front. They're never in the middle. Yes, yes, that's right. They're they're, they're always at the front. They're never they're never in the easier places. Mm. Pointing out that they are the fifth of nine companies. Yeah, able through item. Yeah, and it starts pissing down with rain as well. Yep, as you do, uh, and then it starts pissing down with artillery shells. <laughs> yeah or mortars uh, out of the blue as well and so it is an elevated position that the germans have on oh yes on, across well, it, it turns out that the germans had already effectively left count time because winter says i thought that was too easy <laughs> ah see yeah yeah you think that was easy <laughs> yeah so they they've backed up to to this point here where mm -hmm. uh, Easy Company meet them, but they have an elevated position on Easy Company as well. They they yep. see them coming. They drop some mortars. They take out some people, and they bed down for the night. Oh yeah, they're in a hedgerow. The Germans are in a hedgerow. It's um, it's a standoff. You can hear them over the other side as well, uh, singing away. Yeah, <laughs> the rules of war as well, isn't it? it, it it's. Well, like you say, not rules of war, but they have times of war. It's it comes night time. Okay, fine. Let's all recoup. Let's all get our our uh, people uh, patched up, get our ammo again, and then we'll go fighting in the morning, early doors. I think that's more to do with the fact that the Germans were waiting for their um, armor to arrive. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. That 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 could that could be that 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 could be it too. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I didn't think about that. See, proves that I, I've never, never partaken in any battle whatsoever. Yeah. But yeah, they're um, easy company, uh, dug foxholes, they're dug into for the night. Um, two man per foxhole, you got uh, Blythe with um, Sergeant Martin. Um, and uh, yeah, they're just, uh, you got uh, soldiers walking up and down along the line, just like uh, keeping an eye out. Yep. Um watching for uh, any sneaky Germans coming and uh, jumping uh, over the uh, line. <laughs> Is this one of the, the first lines we get from Dexter Fletcher? Um, what do you mean? Well, I, we've, I think we've seen him, but we haven't really he's first, seen... He's, I think it's the first time he speaks, yeah. Yeah. I think we've seen him around, but... Okay, yeah, so we, we got them sharing a foxhole. So what uh -huh. happens now then? Because something happens over in one of the other foxholes. Okay, so you've got uh, Private Smith, who's uh, asleep, and you've got uh, Talbot, Sergeant Talbot comes back and taps him on the head with a revolver, mm -hmm. you know, saying, wake up, it's your turn to do a patrol. Um, and what happens is he's still groggy, he's still asleep. Um, someone's standing over him. Uh, possibly wearing a German um, poncho. We'll have to go and check that again. I don't think he's wearing a German poncho, to be honest, because I can't believe anyone would be that stupid. But still, um, basically wakes up, grabs his rifle and um, sticks it up him. Uh, and as we know from Dad's army, they don't like it up him. No, definitely not. Up and at him. don't like it. Yes, up and at him. 
<laughs> so anyway, uh, Talbot gets um, stuck um, and starts screaming. Uh, going, ah! um, and Smith's all like, oh, God, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I thought he was a German. <laughs> I thought he was a crowd. <laughs> <laughs> um, and yeah, while this is going, um, you know, Martin says to Blythe, um, can you sleep? He goes, no, well, go see what's making all that noise <laughs> and mm. kicks him out. <laughs> Yeah, because they, they want to get their shut eye as well, don't they? Well, they want to try to, yeah. Uh, while well, sleeping in a foxhole. But yeah, you got got uh, Doc Rowe comes over once again um, to come and uh, fix up Talbot. Uh, but while Bly's on his way, we jump into Dun Dun Da! It's Judge Spears. Yep. <laughs> Who, it's what really are you doing, creepy. civilian? <laughs> it's really creepy. He comes out of, you got screaming. Spears just comes out of the dark and he goes, I heard some noise. And he's just like, I've just come from there. Everything is fine. You know, I'd swear you might think that this guy's going around killing his own men. <laughs> you could think that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, he, he does the cricket before as well. And then uh, Blythe has real trouble to find the, the cricket or re- know where he is, comprehend what's going on to yeah. get his cricket out or even to f- save Flash or Thunder. Yeah. And Spears end, ends up doing the cricket and then saying Flash. And he's, oh, Thunder, Thunder. Yeah. But yeah, Spears kind of you know, escorts him back to his foxhole. And um, Bly effectively um, uh, spills his guts to Spears um, about how he fell asleep in the ditch. And he didn't try and find his company and everything. And then uh, Spears imparts to wisdom that uh, if you want to be a real soldier, you have to accept that you're dead. Mm. Um. And uh, it seems to have made an impact on him. <laughs> yeah, it does. He also asks him about D-Day. Oh, that, mm-hmm. that is because of that, that saying, isn't it? He, he, yeah. Uh, yeah. He says, you know, you have, you have to realise you're already dead. And he's like, oh, okay, well, is that what you did that on D-Day? And he, he doesn't say anything. He looks at him, mm-hmm. but he doesn't say anything. Doesn't say anything, no. He just pulls down his helmet and walks off. Yeah. And I know what? All, all the while, you've got Sergeant Martin literally pissing his pants sitting next to him. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, but the, there you go. Uh, then the next morning, um, uh, the German forces uh, let fire with um, mortars and machine guns and tanks. Oh, tanks. Goddamn. Goddamn tanks. Well, it's just the. Uh... Oh, oh, it, they're just such a menace. They really are. Um, they they were introduced in the First World War, weren't they? Tanks, but oh yeah. Do you know why they were called tanks? Go on. When um when they have been developed and shipped around, uh, they were labelled as water tanks to um uh, baffle enemy intelligence as to what was being uh, moved around. Oh really? Oh yes. Interesting. Interesting now, yeah. and informative as well. Well done, sir. And now you know. And knowing is half a battle. Exactly. The other half is violence. <laughs> so we, they open up on uh, Easy Company. Well, on, and Dog on, Company. Uh, yeah. And Fox Company. <laughs> yeah, everyone's there, aren't they? Yeah. Um, we have mortars. We have early morning firing. Um, and then the tanks roll in. What, what machine you... guns there's, there's everything's going off basically yeah, everything it... including the kitchen sink i'm sure winters is he's bouncing around telling people mm-hmm. to push up and keep firing and oh yeah he's right in the thick of it <laughs> yeah but he's he's he is in the thick of it he's standing up he's he's making himself proud and he's becoming a target as well he, he, he's the kind of guy you know in, in like um in, in, in the 40k universe, he'd be the dumb fuck at the front holding a massive flag saying, please shoot me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, yeah. Yeah. But he won't get shot because he... Of course not. He has character shields. Well, he, he has God <laughs> mode and <Yes>. enabled. <laughs> but yeah, he's he's giving orders and he's really motivating everyone as well. He, he's got such a, a way of motivating people. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, because uh, you got you got Blythe starts. Um, well, he, he breaks down. He starts sobbing and screaming. You know, he's having a proper breakdown there. Yeah. And then Winters kind of comes up and just kind of, you know, doesn't slap him, but you know, effectively kind of goes, you know, get your head back together. 
and stands over, stands out of a foxhole above him, firing, while Blythe's down. He's going, fire your weapon, fire your weapon. Mm. Um, so open fire. Uh, you've got that great bit where you've got um, uh, who was it? It's who's it with the bazookas? Uh, it's Welsh, Welsh and McGrath. Yes. Uh, run out into the field of a tankster approaching with a bazooka, totally exposed, uh, trying to take down one of the tanks. Uh, the first shot just bounces off of it. And they're still just standing there in the middle of his field. And McGrath's going, you're going to get me killed. Um, and then as it comes over the next rise, they fire and it goes in the um, the under armour of the tank, which is a, a weaker point. Yeah. Takes out the first tank, which is awesome. It's just a great shot. Um, you've got Dog and Fox Company. Um, uh, Run away! Run away! <laughs> Yeah, but uh, is it Colonel Strayer? He's turned around and said, well, who gave that order? Yeah. I, I don't think anyone gave that order. I'm pretty sure the German tanks dropping artillery on them gave that order to run away. Oh, that's the problem, right? It's, uh, if, if you can't hold under the fire and the line collapses like that, you know, you allow the enemy to flank you. Yeah. You know, and all of a sudden, uh, Easy Company is exposed because Easy hasn't ret- retreated because they're fucking Easy Company. Yeah. So they're sitting there, still opening fire. Winter's standing on top of his, you know, out of his foxhole, shooting away with um, Lieutenant Walsh there uh, and uh, McGrath with their bazookas. Isn't Spears from Fox Company? No, Spears is Dog Company. Oh, Dog Company. That's right. Yeah. yeah. Sorry. Uh, and, I, and I'm I'm sure he's going around personally shooting anyone he sees running away in the back of the head with a pistol. Yeah, he, he's got his lawgiver on him. What what's the yeah. bike that he drives? The lawmaster. Well? Yeah. Lawmaster. He, he, he's, he, he's he's there firing away. Um, <laughs> but yeah, easy easy company's starting to take some hits. You get uh, one of the machine gunner guys. Uh, the mortar goes off nearby them. Uh, blows one of the guys' helmets off. Yep. Uh, one of the guys trying to move a machine gun uh, takes a shot in the shoulder. Uh, uh, There's some fingers uh, yeah, flying some, around. Yeah, some guy loses his fingers, which is horrible. And, uh, yeah, I mean, you, you kind of think, oh, God, they're going to be overrun. Uh, when all of a sudden, here comes the cavalry, quite literally. Ah, oh, the Shermans turn up. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah Second that's, armoured. That's just <laughs> after um, uh, Welsh and... Uh, the other guy uh, take out with a uh, bazooka. Yeah, they take out the first tank. Um, and they, no, you, you you get the guy with a machine gun takes the um, the round because he's bleeding there, mm. and you, you feel like oh this is this is it you know it's it's going to go down. But then all of a sudden there's an explosion and you realise it's someone was firing on the Germans and then the tanks just come out over the hill, um, opening fire and it's just like uh, it's kind of terrifying when they just kind of come through the trees as well. That is, that's an awesome shot where you got the three tanks just yeah. just flanking them, and you just the uh, anyone who doesn't watch Formula One won't get this. But that first tank, the the guy on the gun on top of that, he looks like Ron Dennis to me, and he looks like he's <laughs> just just <laughs> guiding them in almost. They're, they're not even driving; they're just floating in, and they're just oh, taking yeah. them out, and they've got such a presence about them, and. Yeah, Although the, I'll tell you what, having watched Fury, they do seem to be going really slow. <laughs> okay, yeah. I yeah, I need to watch Fury again just to. I'm I'm saying it's, it's, it's a cool shot, absolutely. And and again, information there's an air of confidence, like we own this. This is our town now. Yeah. We own all of this. But there's there's a scene in Fury where uh, the three Shermans get ambushed, and they're moving a hell of a lot quicker. <laughs> Right, I see, yeah. Yeah, well, tanks are always portrayed as slow but and cumbersome, but they can be quick and nimble as well. But anyway, the, the, you've got the, the Shermans of 2nd Armoured uh, coming along uh, shooting, um, and the Germans are in full retreat at this point. And Winters um, is um, still getting Blythe to stand up and shoot. No, no, Blythe's, Blythe's already stood up at this point, and he's he's got his rifle up and he's looking. Um, and he's like again. You, you see the Germans retreat. You got one of the poor guys gets shot, falls down, just as the tank backs up. Mm. Obviously went to the um, Prometheus School of how to avoid things coming towards you. Oh God! You know, tries to crawl away rather than roll either way, either side, um, and gets squished for his trouble. It's pretty grim, if I'm honest. <laughs> <laughs> I had a recurring dream that that happened to me. 
Oh, nasty. <laughs> yeah, that was not good. Um, but anyway, Blythe's looking through his sights and he, he, he kind of just sees a German and he fires and you see him get hit. But then uh, a tank crosses his field of view. And when it passes, the German has gone like you can't see him. So we don't know if he f- fell or what. Mm. Uh, but anyway, uh, the Germans were in full retreat, you know, easy company and second armor of safety day. Uh, Fox and dog company come back because, you know, now it's now it's safe to do so. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and you got one of those. Um, one of the guys comes over to Blythe and says, hey, uh, you guys like you took a hell of a beating. And he just kind of doesn't say a word, just stares at him and gets out of his trench and walks away. Like, dick move, really. <laughs> yeah, kind of, yeah. And he, he goes looking for the German that he's shot. Yeah. Uh, he finds some blood. He follows the trail and he finds the dead German. Yeah. Uh, a very handsome dead German as well with a nice smile on his face. I'm sure his name was Hans. Yes. And... um he has one of these flowers on him. Yes, he has an Edelweiss too. So he, Blythe, being, you know, the the mad soldier that he is, uh, removes it and takes it for his own. Oh. Dick move or not? I, I think it's supposed to symbolise that now he feels he is a soldier. Okay. He, 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 in his mind, he has become a soldier. He, he's, this is, I think, the first time we've seen him kill someone. Yeah. So, you know, in his mind, it's he's put his demons behind him and now he's able to function. Right. OK, no, that, that makes a bit of sense then. I, yeah, I, I was just under the impression I, I, because it, it's portrayed that it's such a the best of the best soldiers do go and get these flowers. It's to prove that you're the, the ultimate soldier. And then Blythe, just because he's shot someone and now he thinks he's the ultimate bad- badass? I don't know. Well, we don't, we don't say ultimate. We say it's, it's the mark of a true soldier. Yeah. And I suppose in Blythe's mind, the mark of a true soldier is you have killed. Okay, fair enough. Yeah, well, so, that, yeah, that makes sense then. Um, so anyway, he, he, he takes that. Um, we then cut to uh, D-Day plus 25. Yep. So we've jumped about 20 days ahead. And, and this is another weird thing again, you know. It's it's like all of a sudden um, they're on a patrol uh, coming up to a cabin. Um, we want to know what's in it. So they ask for volunteers. And this time Blythe's first time he'll do it. Um, and Walsh is like, well, need a couple more volunteers. No one else volunteers. So he volunteers uh, Dukeman and Martin. Yep. Um and they um they head off towards the um cabin. It's also we have Nixon at this point mention about why is he carrying um his reserve uh, Welsh carrying his reserve shoot around. Um uh, it's because he wants a wedding dress for his wife when he gets back with his fiance. Um This was a common and, thing as well, wasn't it? Oh yeah, cuz silk was being rationed and everything. So yeah. uh you know, there was value. I I think this has been referenced elsewhere as well. Um in in, in Bad Brothers, I think someone else was doing this. Was was it Welsh in the first episode? I mean, uh, Day of Days. Um, I don't. I, I, I just feel, I feel someone's already drawn attention to it. <laughs> I don't remember anyone uh, keeping their parachute. Yeah. I, I yeah. I I don't know. Doesn't it happen later? Uh, I don't think. So. Uh, I don't. I don't know. Anyway. Anyway. Kind of getting away from my own point because what happens is. While they're having this discussion, they're going up to the cabin, Blythe in the lead. Um, and it just has emotions for him to come forward. Um, he gets shot in the base of the neck, um, which is pretty nasty, actually. You know, it's, um, you know, it's bleeding quite a bit. And he's just he's just lying there kind of stunned, mm. um, not quite knowing what's going on. Um, they go in and manage to take out the, um, the cabin. Uh, and at this point, Winters comes up and says... Um, they're being pulled off the front line. They're heading back to England. How's your you know, fucking like, luck? Yeah, I was going to say, you, dude, you could have just shot like five minutes earlier. <laughs> we, yeah, we, we need Sobel, high ho silver in it over that, yeah. that hill. So, no, you can go home now, guys. Oh, absolutely. But, um, but yeah, um, this is kind of a natural end point for the episode. But, um, no, there's, there's more. <laughs> yeah. Um, which is what's 
weird because um, they now go to the hospital back in the UK where um, Walter Gordon's being given his third Purple Heart. Um, I don't think this was the UK. I think, I think it was. I think this was more near Normandy because they didn't fly back uh, to that, Yeah, I don't think this was the no. UK. I think this was more Normandy because they didn't go back to the UK. Okay. Yeah, okay. I'm sure Lipton said that, you no, know, you're not going back to England. Get ready. No, well, that was... No, I, 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 when he says you're not coming back, it's they were back in England and they said we're leaving and pack your stuff because we won't be coming back for a while. Right, okay. Well, we won't be coming back. Okay, um, no, I, 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 I get confused with this because it, it seems like it is set, but it doesn't... It, because we're told where we are all the time, we don't get mm. told we're back in England, and so I, I, well, you got the you got the laundry people though. Um, yeah, that's the thing, but we don't and, get and told we are. We don't get told, but I think we must be because not only are they back in is she British, but she has the laundry from the lieutenant from HQ. Um, what's his name? Um, oh, uh, see it? No, Sears. Um, not Sears. Uh, the HQ lot. Uh, Mihan. Yeah. So, so yeah. I, I. Anyway, kind of getting wherever they are, they're in the hospital, and um, uh, he's getting his third Purple Heart. Um, Popeye's still there, lying, um, on his front, um, as Bly's been wheeled in, and um, Popeye mentions that Gordon, you know, because he got shot in the shoulder once in the calf, and he had a boil lanced, um. I'm not quite sure why the boil lancing qualifies you for a purple heart. Um, Cause I'm pretty sure you're only eligible if it's from enemy, if you're injured for enemy action. Right. Um, because um, we find out the tall book getting stabbed wouldn't be eligible because it was friendly fire. Yeah. 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 Anyway, um, Blythe's just staring with a blank expression. Um, and that's the last time we see Blythe in the, uh, in the series. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, you've got the 101st arresting. Um, you've got Malarkey and uh, Moore riding around on a joyride on a motorcycle, <laughs> as you do. And nearly taking each other out, crying out loud. Nearly taking each other out, yeah. Um, uh, we meet up with Easy Company, who are just kind of relaxing um, in a barn. Um, and uh, yeah, it's uh, Gordon again with his three uh, purple hearts reciting poetry about the night of a bayonet <laughs> about how uh, Talbot got uh, stabbed by Smith, which was a, uh, it's a very nice rhyme. <laughs> it must be said, which I think is genius uh, as well. It's, it's genius. It's, it's very funny. It's cool. Uh, we also, our first sign of replacements who will be the feature in the next episode. Yeah. Um, again, you know, just kind of introducing people a bit earlier. Um, I mean, we, we already get the sense that, that, you know, they're their own little clique at the minute. But then uh, Garnier says um, he recognises one of them's accent. He goes, uh, are you from Philadelphia? Yeah, I can tell. 17th Street? And uh, I'm from Front Street. And, you know, he invites that guy over to join them because they're, um, you know, from the same part of town. Yeah. Uh, and having fun. Uh, but, yeah, Gordon gives um, Talbot one of his Purple Hearts uh, since he wouldn't have been eligible because it was friendly fire. Which I think is a brilliant gesture. Oh, it's a it's a great little gesture, yeah. And and again, since one of them was for a boil being lanced, I, I think perfectly apt. <laughs> yes, definitely, definitely. Um, yeah, uh, Lipton. Then we see has recovered more or less. He's got a little bit of a scar on his face, um, but otherwise okay. Uh, informs everyone that uh, I have good news and bad news. Uh, the good news is the training exercise for tonight has been cancelled. Hooray! The bad news is we're going back to France oh. and to pack your gear because we're not coming back to England. So, woo. Um, which kind of sucks. Um, you then get uh, Malarkey, who's now a sergeant, uh, going to go and collect uh, the laundry. And uh, she says, uh, well, here you go. And then they're like, uh, well, while you're here, would you mind picking up some other laundry? And uh, Sergeant Evans, Private Moyer, Private Blueser, Private Gray, um, Private Miller, Sergeant Owen, um, basically a lot of people who have died finally mentioning Blythe as well. Yeah. Uh, and poor Malarkey gets stuck with a bill for all of this. You know, that's kind of a dick move, but still. 
he he pays it um he pays the bill anyway and uh and off he goes and then we get a line about how that when easy pulled off the line they had lost 65 men jesus yeah 65 men in effectively 25 days um but it does then say Blythe uh, never recovered from his wound and died in 1948. However, mm. he didn't actually die until 1967. That's right, yeah. Uh, but I believe that's a, Winters believed he died in 48, but it was only later they found out he died in 67. Um, but they were going with what was written in the book. So, I think maybe. this was this was from uh, who wrote the book? Stephen Ambrose. Yeah, I think this was from the books. Yeah. And it it was corrected in later books, but it wasn't corrected in the DVDs or Blu-rays or anything like that that was uh, put out. It was never corrected yeah. in that. But I think Easy Company thought that he had died, and so that is it, it became gospel. Yeah, exactly, yeah. But really, I think he died of what I read today. He died of a perforated ulcer. Yep. I think it was. Mm-hmm. In 67, he'd, he'd gone back for uh, a memorial at, at some point and it had burst. So, yeah. He he made it. He had kids as well. So, so yeah, he, he made it out of the war. I think he served again at some other points as well. But I, mm-hmm. I couldn't be too sure on that. Uh, but, yeah, mm-hmm. it's the, the way... Uh, the heart rendering part about this thing is when Malarkey is going to get the packages, and it's oh yeah, and is it Miss Mrs Lamb? I think she's introduced as. Uh, it's okay. Well, um, here's yours, and oh, could you go? Th- it, it's just why the Mal- Malarkey looks at him and goes, "Okay, mm-hmm. yeah, you've done all this work, and so really, I should kind of." take this off of you. I, I, don't... I don't think it was about the work I think it was just more he didn't want to have the uh, he didn't want to acknowledge they were dead or yeah. at least not say it out loud not have that conversation exactly yeah, yeah. but it's, it's just it's so softly done and then all of a sudden the viewer is watching this going oh dear we know exactly where this is going and it, yeah, it ends up with Blythe as well so we oh it it's a, a tearjerker, shall we say? Oh yeah, cool. it's um I, again it's, it's a powerful statement and I like it. I just feel that the episode as a whole was just largely undercut because we just don't get to know Blythe. Yeah. Um, and and, and again, I mean, it, it it doesn't even kind of end right because we see him in the hospital and then there's a whole couple more scenes afterwards. And I know it's supposed to be implied that he died because um, his um, laundry is one of the ones that um, Malarkey's collecting. Yeah. But it just it it just doesn't it, it it could have landed so much better, you know. Yeah. Just 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 from a couple of scenes in the first two episodes to just bring him in a bit more, you know. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, I suppose. I don't, the, the problem is the dates dictate that this episode had to be now. Oh, absolutely. And again, I'm I'm, I'm not criticising that as such. And I, and I know it's difficult if you say, well, why couldn't you have a couple of scenes in these other episodes? Well, something else would have had to come out. But I just feel that if they knew this was going to be the third episode, they knew they were going to be doing this focus, it would have just served them well to just introduce him to us a bit earlier and it doesn't have to be a lot it could have just been a scene or something where we find out that Blythe is quiet and introspective even in basic Mm. so we get that sense of him you know maybe he's a guy who was often wistfully looking at the sky in Georgia yeah and just something like that just so we've seen him earlier or again if he well, not that you can really change the facts, but again, if he hadn't been in Easy Company, if he'd have been in one of the other companies, and you then you have a sense of, oh, we don't know him. But because everyone knows him and everyone has a connection to him already, but we, the audience, haven't, it's just a bit disconcerting. Yeah, it misses its mark ever so slightly. Yeah. 
they they are allowed to muck around with truths and where people sit and so there wouldn't have been much of a, a an issue about moving him to a different company or oh, I don't, yeah yeah they, is it insulting to move him just to a different company just for for story purposes maybe it is I think it is and I, and again I just think, I I think the way to have dealt with this would have been to just just in de- I mean hell you could have just like I said just taking that shot of him looking again just putting a shot in day of days of him asleep in the trench yeah just just you could just have had a couple of bits which just kind of just tie him into the earlier story because as it is he just feels like he's a guest star for this episode yeah that he's wouldn't even be that wouldn't even been 30 seconds would it it would have been 10 exactly. seconds at the most mm-hmm. okay well yeah there, there we go we've we've sorted that issue out then there you go that is it for um caratan that is it so okay, uh, we do have some feedback, which is Whey! which is always nice. Um, I'm going to hit you. We we've got three bits of feedback, so uh, I'm going to hit you with the first bit if you don't mind. Oh, uh, hit me with is, your rhythm stick. This is from Doreen Kelly. Keldor. Yeah, the uh, the the Shonky Lab mascot as well. So um, she says, "Flash, hello again." The cinematography in, in this is gorgeous. It seems. Seems odd to write. This story of war and its horrors has some uh, striking backdrops. I'm referring to the scenes near the beginning where they were all on a night march. There seems to be some kind of forest fire on the skyline. The soldiers are marching through swampy land with the standing water in which the flames are reflected. My first reflection was how stunning the visuals were and then felt really bad, which I totally agree with. Um... The story about the Ed- Ed- Edelweiss flower. Edelweiss. Uh, that's it, sorry. Uh, which they find in the dead German soldier buttonhole was haunting and beautiful. And the telling of, of it was pitch perfect. However, being female, I think that it may have been a little unrealistic. When I was little, I used to pick flowers. Even when they were, uh, even when they were put into water, they never looked that good in the morning. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I, I get that. I get that. When I buy my missus flowers, all of a sudden they're they're very droopy the next day. That's that's not that I buy petrol station flowers or anything like that. So anyway, I'm digressing again. Uh, does anyone know if they use some kind of preservatives or something? Answers on the Facebook group. Oh, and whilst I'm on the subject, I would ask others to add a five star review to iTunes and other podcast catchers. Yes, certainly. Oh boy, the scenes of the leg being blown off were quite something, and I think that I'll leave that one there. I feel that the Blythe situation requires comment. I don't feel uh, qualified to do so, but his bravery in volunteering to to, uh, to scout out the farmhouse was absolutely real, and no one could take that from him. Remember to use the flash thunder greeting whenever it was uh, to stop someone you wake up and uh, up attacking you is anyone's guess. But hopefully, in the more often it is used, the more automatic it will become. I enjoyed the bit in the uh, mass near the end when the injured man with the three purple hearts was given the limerick filled speech, which ended with him giving the purple heart to the man who was injured, but uh, not by the enemy. OK, I'm sure that I've actually seen this before. The man being run over by the tank, it would be hard to forget. Or perhaps I'm just seeing it with new eyes. I wonder if the BBC, uh, wonder if the BBC edited this a little. In the Saving Private Ryan cast, Elton and Andy, you talked briefly about the scene in the church, which happened in later scenes, which I'm sure I've seen. The laundry roll roll call of the dead injured was tragic. Thunder, thunder! Look after yourselves. And there we go. That's from Doreen. Thank um, you, Doreen. Yeah, the the tank piece that we mm-hmm. saw. I know I've had reoccurring dreams about this when I was younger, and but I was laying on my back, being run over by the tank, not on my <laughs> stomach. So, um, but I, I swear that that might even be from Anzacs too. I it it is familiar. Well, it is also in uh, Last Crusade. Yeah, yeah, you have that as well. Put put it this way: any, any film where there's a tank in it, odds are someone's going to get run over. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's normally a Nazi that gets run over as well. Yeah, usually. I'm sure, anyway. 
But okay, fine. Um, who do you have? Uh, I have uh, Josh uh, Bruins. Okay. I think I'm saying that right. If we're not, let and us know. If, if not, do let us know, yes. Ang- angry letters on the Facebook group. Uh, and Josh writes, uh, hey, fellows, hope I catch you in time. I know you're recording today. Well, congratulations, sir, you have. Um, there is much to love about this episode. The action is, of course, fantastic. And what we see of Easy's battle inside and outside the city are intense. The way the episode, in in a sense, centered around private life without really making it about him adds to an incredibly human and tragic layer to a story already with its share of tragedies. There's a lot of great moments, but without a doubt, one which hits home for me is when Spears is talking to Blythe and tells him the only hope you have is to accept the fact you're already dead. It's an extreme but real view. When I was in Afghanistan, one of my sergeants would refer to these lines often. He was a family man and a great around person, but that was the view on his deployment. And every time we got back to the States, he would just sort of pack it away in a dark corner somewhere inside and go back to being normal. Excellent work on the podcast, gentlemen. Looking forward to this one. Keep it up. Josh. Thank you very much. Oh, thank you very much, sir. Yes. Um, And yeah, I mean, to be honest, I've heard that from other veterans and everything as well. They they have um, ways of dealing with it, be it from um, a, a certain mindset well, uh, going back yeah. to civvies well it, it's more so you know the whole accepting that you're dead um sort of thing that that kind of i i mean i mean the military certainly the british military i don't know if it's the same in the u.s but uh they have the blackest humor yeah like it it, it, it is dark as anything um uh, because it's how they get through uh gallows humor and stuff like that there um and, and and often cases, you know, and it's starting to become more apparent in recent time, partly because so many um, young men are coming back from these wars, but also because we're so much better now at identifying and treating these things, uh, have so much trouble uh, when they get back from deployments and all this because they go to very dark places out there and it's very hard to come back from those places. Yeah. Um, going back to being normal. Note the finger quotes there. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, I mean that that's I mean hell, that's a shonky lab episode for you at some point. Oh, that's that's oh. <laughs> Do I go. dare even touch that? That's the thing. Hey, mate, you, you you did fantastically well with the depression episode. Which yeah. any anyone listening out there, check that episode of Shonky Lab out. It was amazing. But you, you've you've got the skills and the maturity to deal with it. If you can find some people willing to talk. I think it would make for a fantastic episode. Okay. But, uh, put, a, put, put a pin in that for later. Yeah, I'll, I'll put yeah. that on the cards at some point. Mm. Okay. Uh, yeah, it's it, it, even watching Generation Kill, that has gallows humour strewn all the way through it as well. And mm. it's, I think it's just a way of dealing with things and a way of life. And it becomes so ingrained that it is it becomes a point where it's not a way of dealing with it it's just the way that you are yeah and that that's what you become when you're on duty but i haven't served so i do not know the the closest i got to serving was joining the atc when i was still at school and uh yeah didn't didn't take that any further so i i've done my my share of night operations <laughs> as a kid but um you've done your bit for king and country eh? I'd, I'd like to think so but um, <laughs> I'm, I'm sure my granddads are both spinning in their graves with what they went through <laughs> uh yeah no oh, that that's another story so anyway thank you very much for that josh uh, yes thank you we do have a uh note on the facebook group as well uh mm-hmm. normally when i put up the the header picture for the next episode if you want to leave messages below there about the episode that we're going to be talking about uh just pop along to facebook.com and then search for band of brothers podcast and we'll pop up straight away on that so uh donna um lumsden oh no lum right lumsden lumsden donna lumsden has left a message on there and she says uh r.i.p sergeant ed tipper who died just last month uh, we see Tipper seriously wounded and being helped by Joe Libgott in this episode during the Battle of to take Caratan. Uh, 
that's the one in the um in the uh pharmacy which blows up yeah that's the yeah the guy mm-hmm. with the eyes and the legs and yeah. yeah okay uh the muffling of the sound and the point of view used in this scene uh, means it's se- seared into my brain even though we ha- there was action and death in day of days somehow this episode brought home more than the uh, more than that the terror of the attacking enemy forces that uh, that run to the T-junction in Karatan. Sorry, I, I always balls up reading out uh, feedback, so you, you're going to have to get used to that. That's the way it is on here. But thank you very much for that. That I didn't realise he'd... Uh, is that the, uh, the the chat that I posted up uh, a little while ago? Uh, I think it might well have been, yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, because it, 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 yes, it, it was... was. Yeah, it was just... Um, it was just before we really kicked off, wasn't it? That's right. Yes. Yes, it was. Yes. So I I, I did post it up there. Okay, cool. Wow. Yes. 95 and, years old. So uh yeah, well done that man. And definitely yeah, that that run to the T junction in Car- Carantan. Wow. Yeah. How how do you even do that? I do not know. I really don't. Okay. So next time out, what have we got next time out? We have the episode called Replacements. Mm-hmm. Uh, any uh, okay this episode I don't know if it jars me or not uh, we we get uh, <laughs> we get the English accents coming back in this one <laughs> we do we do <laughs> by this, Jove this... I can't see them <laughs> uh, ha- have, have you ever seen um, the film A Bridge Too Far I may have well, you should because a it's a fantastic film and yeah. it has everyone is in it. Gene Hackman is in it. Michael Caine's in it. I think Sean Connery's in it. It's like literally everyone is in this bloody film, uh, and it's about Operation Market Garden, which was the Allied invasion. They tried to do Norman uh, D Day again in the Netherlands with a mass parachute drop. Okay, didn't go quite to plan. Um, snafu. Yes, if you remember. Um, but yeah, uh, I, I remember enjoying this episode because it, it was, a lot of it was focusing around um, Sergeant Bull Randleman, who's I just like the character. <laughs> He's always got a cigar in his mouth. Abraham, that's who he is from The Walking Dead. Abraham, I've just yeah. remembered. <laughs> um, but yeah, um, also it's dealing with the whole you've got new people coming in. So you've got the kind of the click you got the, those who served through Normandy and those who didn't. And you're getting kind of like a butting of heads of some sort of divisions going on there. Yeah, there's a, a hierarchy that is is uh, forcing its way through, even mm-hmm. though they don't want that to force its way through. Yeah. Yeah, I I remember enjoying this episode, but I feel... I may have seen this episode one too many times. I think I enjoy um, Carrington more than Replacements. Okay. But, you know, that, that's yet to be seen. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I'm looking forward to watching this again. So uh, we'll be recording, what, in two weeks' time? That's the plan. That is um, the plan. Right? As we know, no plan survives contact with the enemy. This is true. <laughs> yes, it, it is true. Uh, if you want to leave uh, feedback for us like the other chaps done uh, then either pop along to the facebook group and leave it on there just make sure that we know that it is for reading out on the episode or me stuttering all over it and screwing it all up or you can either uh, you can leave audio comments as well you can email oh, yes. them over to rogue to media at gmail.com or you can send an email over to road to media at gmail.com and we'll get them and we'll pass them out and uh, read them out as best as our ability lets us. So that is it for this week. Uh, do you have anything to plug and let these wonderful people know what they should be listening to after this? Oh, uh, well, uh, as we've already mentioned, uh, uh, the other podcast I do is Space Talk Jury, um, which you can find at space.geekplanetonline.com and also on uh, the Book of Face and iTunes. And, and this week's one, which just came out, which will probably be last week's one um, from the time this comes out, um, we rate all the Star Wars films uh, and in no way have a massive argument about stuff. 
Sweet. Because we, we we don't do that at all on Space Dot. No, no, not much. Spo- spoiler alert, spoiler alert for the main episode, which comes in a couple of weeks' time. I broke Lee. Oh no. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, does, does this require either some making up, or does it require a pub episode? Uh. I, I think it requires me uh, hopping on a ship and getting to the other side of the galaxy. <laughs> okay, fair enough. But you'll have to wait a few weeks for that one. <laughs> okay, excellent. I'm looking forward to that. I'm, I'll, I'll be listening to the, the Star Wars episode. Is it out now? As it we is record? out now, yes. Okay, As I, we record it, it's out now, yes. I'll be listening to that tomorrow morning on my way to yes. work. Um, me, on the other hand, well, I do the Grand Prix podcast with this other man over here, uh, with Andy. Yes. Um, And we will be doing an episode soon because testing is on. Yes, testing is on. We have a little competition that we have to wrap up as well. So uh, if you want to head over there, go to GrandPrixPodcast.com. We talk about Formula One. That's all we talk about. And maybe some other silly little stuff over there. But it's mainly Formula One. If you don't like it, eh, just steer clear. Maybe drop a five-star rated iTunes review and then disappear. That'll do me. Um, I'm also the fourth chair on the Black Dog Podcast, which is uh, blackdogpodcast.com. And that's all on iTunes and Stitcher and all other places as well. That's a film review uh, show. Uh, please check out Hypnobobs, which is on uh, Geek Planet Online and on iTunes and all the other places as well. And I do the Shonky Lab, which is at shonkylab.com and on iTunes and all the other places as well that you can catch these and on Rogue 2 Media as well. So, um, by the way, if you do have five minutes, as Doreen said, please pop along to iTunes. Just help us up the magical ladder that we have and leave a, a review on there just to, just to help us out and be nice. So thank you very much anyway. So that's it, isn't it? I'm sure it is. Yeah, I think so. Okay, yeah. excellent. Well, we're I, think, I think we've ticked all our boxes and everything. Sweet. We've we've sold our wares and now we can move on. So on to your next show that you, you're listening to. So thank you very much, everyone, uh, for listening to us. Thank you uh, to Andy for joining me as per normal and putting up ah, with you're me. You're welcome, sir. And uh, we'll catch you next time for replacements. Until then, ta-da. <laughs>